There's a story here that I'm dying to tell. And it has to do with a brand new comedian. Well, a comedian that I thought was brand new. I'd never really uh, heard of this guy. Apparently, a lot of you guys like this guy. And uh, maybe I even like him, too. We're going to find out today. Uh, It's the sad and shocking story of SNL's newest cast member, Shane Gillis. Am I saying that right? I think so. Shane Gillis. You know, and I know very little about him. However... Um, I was introduced to him or I probably saw him around. I just wasn't paying attention because he kind of kind of just looks like an average schlub. You know what I mean? Doesn't really have a star presence. Uh, so I maybe I've seen him around. But uh, Xander I, said he's the best podcast guest. Well, we're going to find out. Him. We're going to find out today. <laughs> So I saw him two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, on my favorite, uh, my favorite podcast, everybody's favorite live podcast, Kill Tony, Tony Hinchcliffe's Kill Tony. Remember Kill Tony? I saw him on there, and it actually, uh, something happened on that show that we wrote down, and we were going to show everybody, but I go, I don't know if people know who Shane Gillis is, so I'm not going to show this on the show yet but we had it in our show notes we have it in our show notes and then the other day i see somebody saying something about shane gillis he got uh he's this new snl cast member how did this start yesterday yesterday we're sitting around and it it came about it was such a weird how this thing came about somebody was talking about like compound media and this guy shane gillis i think T-Buzz. Yes, T-Buzz, this guy, this listener of ours. T-Buzz. Okay, sure. Let's hear this. He posted on the Bring Back group that a guy who has a show on Compound Media, Shane Gillis, got an SNL cast member Ah, position. got it. Okay. So, I guess Shane Gillis has a show on Compound Media as well? I didn't know about this. A Fair One, one of their new trial shows. that's it. It's called A Fair One, his show. Now, we saw this guy, Shane Gillis, again, on Kill Tony, and something weird happened. I'm going to show you that clip today. And then yesterday, uh, that guy, T-Buzz, goes, yeah, this guy uh, from Compound Media got, uh, he's the new SNL cast member. And then I'm looking at this article, and they say, Shane Gillis is this new SNL cast member. And I go, oh, my God, I saw this guy on Kill Tony three weeks ago, and I actually wrote down a time code. I was sitting on this clip thinking none of you knew who he was, but this is perfect. Now that he's got SNL, I could show the clip and it'll have. And then somebody commented, they go, wow, I can't believe Shane got SNL, you know, if he's working with Anthony Cumia on the Compound Media Network. You know, Anthony Cumia, the guy who said, uh, they're not people, they're slaves, they're savages, when talking about blacks, right? Um. They said, wow, I can't believe some guy who's got a show on Compound Media is going to be on SNL. That's going to be tough for him. And then somebody else chimed in in the thread in the Bring Back group and said, yeah, oh, Shane Gillis says a lot of bad stuff. I can't believe he got SNL. And then literally an hour later in that thread, someone goes, wow, that didn't take long. And they posted a link of some SJs on Twitter saying, oh, Shane Gillis, he's a racist. Here's proof. And then an hour after that, the New York Times and Vanity Fair run the story. Shane Gillis is a racist. So we've got all this for you today. And then at the end, I'll show you my clip. You know, uh, Shane Gillis is a racist stuff. That stuff is funny to me. That's just fun stuff. (laughs) But the clip I have to show you, this is where I draw the line, actually. So the racism stuff, (laughs) I actually like. I would encourage more people to do stuff like that. That's very funny. We'll show you all that. But then at the end, I'm going to show you something that I don't like about Shane. Now, I do understand that a lot of people like him. I don't know him. I've seen some of his racist clips. I actually like those. And I'm going to be honest here. Those are spicy. Okay? Those make me smile. Uh, but what I saw about him at the end, I didn't like, so I am going to ultimately probably be, probably be picking on him today, but I want to make it perfectly clear. I am undecided. All right. I'm just doing what I do best. And if somebody is a comedian, there is a 90% chance that they are bad. 
Okay? You, you know me with that, okay? So, uh, let's find out here today. Let's see where they started. So, he gets SNL. Let's see. And here's the article. Here's the original tweet. Okay, so he gets SNL. They're like, uh, we're announcing three new cast members today. Shingles, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. And some SJW. And I don't know how they found this so quick. This guy, Seth Simons. He goes, today, SNL announced the hiring of its first cast member of East Asian descent. Which they did. They also picked a Chinese guy. Yep. Chang Wang, I think is his name. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't know a lick of English, so this is going to be interesting. So they do have a Chinese guy, no English. I think he's just going to stand there in the background. They needed somebody, uh, you know, in case they do a North Korea sketch or something. Uh, today, SNL announced the hiring of its first cast member of East Asian descent. And also this guy. And then they pull a clip. Here's Shane Gillis. Have you ever seen this guy? He's a chubby little guy. He kind of looks like the pig cops from that new ASAP Rocky music video. Very similar. Yes. If you've seen the new ASAP Rocky music video, Babushka, right? Yep. There's pig police officers. Police officers dress as pigs. Very similar. Yes. So here he is. They pulled this clip. This is from 2018. And they pulled this immediately after hearing the news. Let's uh, take a listen to this amazing clip here. Damn, Chinatown's fucking nuts. Chinatown. Crazy. It is full fucking China. Dude, it's yeah. fucking Chinese down there. I wonder how that started. Oh, they just okay, so bad audio here. Let me fix this. So they're talking about it's some podcast. Who's this guy? Does anyone know? See, I'm out of the loop with these two. I'm assuming that guy's name is Matt, because wow. this is called Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast. Oh, okay. Looks like cool, guys. And they're sitting around doing a podcast, and it starts out going, Chinatown. It's really Chinese down there. Okay. A word that I've used many times, Chinese. Instead of Chinese, this is how they pronounce it. I mean, what are we supposed to do? Rewrite history here? Let's hear them. Damn, Chinatown's fucking nuts. It's crazy, dude. It is full fucking China, dude. It's yeah. a bunch of Chinese down there. I wonder how that started. They just built one fucked up looking building and people were like, all right, no I one said it. anything. Let's Let the fucking <laughs> live there, huh? Uh-oh. <laughs> well, they built... So that's a tough one for people, especially A.D. Bryant, the big fat woman from SNL. I don't think I want to hear anything like that. You know, she's going to be 80 Brian. That's pretty good 80 Brian, huh? 80 Brian's going to be furious when she hears this. He said a lot of <laughs> down there. Okay. And that is uh, just another word for Chinese people that uh, a lot of people don't like. I happen to think that's a fine word. Uh, so he says this, that's a hard one to get out of saying, you know, that, uh, around those woke cast members, you know, Colin, uh, what is his name? The, is his name Colin? Uh, Colin Jost. Colin Jost is not going to like that. I mean, these guys are pretty woke over there at SNL. One fucked up looking building and people were like, well, all right, no one said anything. Let's the fucking dicks live there, huh? Ah. <laughs> well, they built these fucking like huge Shanghai house. The first one was Shanghai like, house. Everyone. I'm, like, I'm pissed what now. The I go fuck? down there. I'm like, what are you guys doing here? Get these ducks out of that window. I, you ducks. know what? Yeah, true. Also, I'm always like, how can there be so many fucking restaurants down here? All restaurants. Well, because you go in, there's like one person eating ever. That white idiots like me are down there, true, sucking down neuters. I hate China. I hate the food at Chinatown. It sucks. I like Chinese it. foods are very dissonant. See, these guys are funny, man. I'd like to hang out with these guys. These are my role models now. So, uh, I like, I get what they're doing. Just sitting around talking about uh, how... I mean, you know. and uh, But you go on woke Twitter. Twitter is outraged by this alone. They are outraged. I mean, I saw comments saying stuff like, I've never seen anything more disgusting in my entire life. Is there any guy worse than this? And Jules is sitting there like, fuck, if they saw a red bar, <laughs> we're fucking done. And then I said, no, we're not done. These people are nuts. They can shout all that nonsense into the the abyss all they want. It's not illegal. It's not illegal to sit around and go, Chinese people. <laughs> That's not illegal. Sorry. So, um, man, there are going to be a lot of bleeps in this YouTube clip, huh? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, you know, nothing to worry about unless you're the new SNL cast member. You can't live in both worlds. You really can't. So I'm sitting here wondering, and he said a lot of stuff. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Turns out this Shane guy deleted all of his old podcast he episodes. Pre -deleted pre -deleted them pre -deleted in preparation these. for so, the announcement. Okay. So I'm on the fence here. 
You got Shane Gillis, who appears to be cool. Seems like he thinks like us, right? Cool guy. Says what he wants to in the, uh, you know, uh, in the in the way. I don't think it's racist, of course. You know, I'm not going to explain why we do this type of stuff. This is where we get our thrills. This is where we get our kicks. If you don't get it, sorry. Don't, uh, don't thrill shame me. How about that? How about I'm not allowed to kink shame? You know, I get accused of this. I was accused of kink shaming on YouTube when I went after True Jordy because he deep-throated a black dildo covered in human feces. This is true. True Jordy took a black dildo out of someone's ass. It's covered in shit. Mm, I love that feces, he says. And I said, oh, that is sick. And I was met with, oh, you can't kink shame. You can't shame anybody for what they're into. Okay, well, don't thrill shame me. I get a kick. I get a thrill out of saying some outlandish things. Okay, that's my fetish. Okay, that's my gender. I assimilate or I, uh, you know, what do they call that? Where you, uh. I identify? identify as a guy like that. So <laughs> don't shame me. And they're doing the same thing. And this is unexplainable to these, you know, people. And I don't explain it to them. Don't even try. Why would I? Why would I give a fuck? But I have set up my life in a way where it's it can't affect me. You see, you know, if SNL came to me and said, Mike, we would like to give you a role as, you know, a funny guy in our sketch. I would go, <laughs> Thank you for the offer, SNL. I don't think so. It would be bad for you and terrible for me, okay? It would turn my life upside down. So Shane Gillis here, and I am being suspicious as I am of all comedians. They're cuckoo. So Shane Gillis wants to be me, say whatever he wants, get all the laughs, get that Sam Hyde cro crowd roll in, okay? All those internet guys. Oh, Shane, Shane, Shane. He's our man. If he can't do it, nobody can and then he also wants to be on SNL, which is a sellout move. All right, let's be perfectly clear. SNL is the enemy of people like us. They are. They put us down. They want us gone. They are not our friends. So why is he joining a SNL? Now, is he a guy like me? You know, like me. Ooh, okay, I'll take the opportunity, right? I'm this bad guy, duh. And I will uh, join Compound Media, okay, as a gag and see how long it lasts and scoop up everything I can from the opportunity and run. I would say, yes, maybe he's doing that. But why did he delete all of his episodes? Well, there go. So let's talk about that. So two weeks ago, he deleted all of his archives. He deleted a lot of his tweets. So I think what happened is he was the bad guy as long as it lasted. He loved the fanfare from being the bad guy, right? And then SNL opportunity comes. <gasps> I'd rather have that. Delete the episodes. I'm not a bad guy anymore. They're saying he privated his Reddit also. <sighs> so can we cheerlead a guy like that? Or did he sell out? Did he wipe his nose of us? You know, so uh, I understand, and I know this is going to be a touchy subject because a lot of people like this guy. Mike, you're wrong. Shane's cool. Well, is he still cool? You know, you're only as cool as you once were. You can fuck that up. You could fuck up being cool. Is this a fuck up? We're going to find out today. So uh, here he is. And others. This is the guy I like. I don't know what he's going to do on SNL. Would I take that opportunity? Uh, I don't think I would. I mean, come on, man. You know, uh, why would you want that kind of uh, pressure? You know, why would you want that kind of, uh, why would you want to invite that kind of uh, stuff into your life? You know, and SNL doesn't pay. It's not like it pays. Um, so, you know, they pay you, I think, $2,500 a week for the first year. And now year. you have an article from the New York Times, New York Times. calling so you a let's, racist. Let's go that over this. Up. Let's look at the articles here. This picked up real quick. Look at this. Vulture. New SNL hire Shane Gillis has a history of racist and homophobic remarks. Uh -oh. Yikes. They love this stuff. Here, let's look at the next one here. These are good. Variety. They were quick. 
New West it out. Come on, Variety. We got a live show. Oh, I could skip the ad. Do your ad guys get the, do they think that I still watch it? New SNL cast member Shane Gillis uses racist, sexist, and homophobic remarks in resurfaced material. Ha ha ha. There he is, smiling. Not really resurfaced. He kind of looks like, do people say this? He looks like that quirky. I'm not going to get into that. Poor Shane. You know, I'm on his He's side. Going through a lot. I'm today. on his side. He's going through a lot. For, I think CNN. I actually had a dream about him last night. Really? New SNL, so here's CNN. New SNL, hire, where's the, uh, defends his comedy after bigoted comments surface. Whoa, I don't think so. We're going to show you that in a second. I don't think he defended I nothing. sent you the New York Times one because I don't think your list updated because that okay, was the first one. Okay, here we go, the New York Times. Here's the biggie. And New York Times can put a stop to people real quick. We've seen this before. <laughs> Shane Gillis's new SNL cast member used, uh, Shane Gillis, the new SNL cast member, used racial slur in podcasts. That's not just it. So they love this stuff. The news loves this stuff. And the people on Twitter went nuts. Do we have some uh, angry Twitter moments here? Yeah. Yeah, this is the Twitter moment. Here's the Twitter moment all over Twitter. Uh, oh, wow. May contain sensitive material. Oh, okay. I got to continue. continue. Wow, look at that. I got to. Wow, you were everybody covering this one. Wow, look at this. It's everywhere. So let's look at this thread, though. Look what people are saying. And this is what appalls me. I, I can't sleep when I read this stuff. Because, it, it, listen, there is nobody who has said worse stuff than me out there. Mm, there's not so. one man. I don't think so. Maybe David Duke. <laughs> okay? Oh, and I'm not racist. If you're just meeting me for the first time, I am. <laughs> I'm not racist. I can explain. Okay? Um. Look at this. I hope he gets in trouble because... He broke a rule. Oh, okay. I think that guy's kidding. Two white men talking about how Chinese cuisine is bad. I have to laugh. Okay, that's pretty good. That's not that bad. Ha ha ha. This is fucking hilarious. Thanks for sharing us. And I will finally wow, be so funny. Looks like he's getting a lot of this support. This is turning today. around. Look Last at this. Last night when I was reading the replies to yeah, this, the top every replies. single person was like, I can't even breathe after watching this. It's so sickening. I'm going blind. I'm wow. Busy. So it's kind of turned around. People are sticking up for him. Yo, bro, you're bugging. This man is funny. People are saying, look at this. Something tasteless, salty. Yeah, we were reading these replies yesterday to this initial tweet about his bigotry. Uh, and really, it was one after the, uh, the other. I'm disgusted. I've never seen anything like this in my life. He is a bit. I can't believe this. He shouldn't be allowed to breathe. So, I linked to some more of the mad people if you want to see, oh, but it's okay, nice yeah. to what see do you that got here? people Let's see. Yeah, that is nice. You know, things are a changing here. Who's Mike Ryan? Is he mad? I just picked the blue check mark. People. Mike Ryan blue check marks are the worst. They say, He says, I started covering SNL professionally in 2010. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> and I've had a strict rule. I never comment publicly about cast members' future employment status because it didn't seem fair. What the fuck are you on, bro? But Shane Gillis is now the exception. Completely unacceptable. He needs to be dismissed immediately. This guy says, not me. Wow. You know, pretty harsh here. Let's see another one here. People were pretty mad. These blue check marks. Here's Pat Reber. Thinking about tweeting that Shane Gillis is a bootlicking racist prick that harasses women for not wanting to fuck him. But I'm super scared someone will suggest that I'm jealous or only saying it to get booked on a show, which is the ultimate insult to me. What should I do? Oh, so that guy's a comic. Yeah. I can't believe there's so many comics. When I started uh, getting involved in the comedy business, there were 45 comics across the whole nation. Now, billions. <laughs> uh, you know, We walked past this flyer the other day that was like Chicago Women's Comedy Festival, and there were so many women on the flyer that you could barely even see them. It was like a it crowd was of hundreds. Yeah. Thousands of women are involved in comedy. When I got into comedy, women weren't, there was one woman per 100 men. Yeah. Women did not enjoy comedy. Now it's mostly women with glasses, you know. If you click the second tweet from the bottom of that list, it's this comedy club that he used to work at. And they were like, we knew he was bad ages wow. ago. Wow, the us good, credit. good comedy theater. Look at this. The good, good comedy theater chimes in. We, like many, were very quickly disgusted by Shane Gillis's overt racism, sexism, homophobia, and transphobia. Express both. 
on and off stage. Upon working with him years ago, we've deliberately chosen not to work with him in the years since. Ooh. Congrats. <laughs> oh, oh my God, thank you for saving us from... Uh, imagine if we heard him say... Oh, uh, what would we do? So they're uh, they're against this guy now, and, and I was going. So last night I see all this, and I'm going, "What's going to happen here?" Because okay, I can they ignore this? Are they? Go- I, I, and my guess was I thought Lauren Michaels from SNL and Shane he was going to pull him in. Uh, we've got a problem here. Uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to wait a week. If in a week people are still talking about this. We're going to say goodbye. So let's hope that this goes away quickly. That's what I thought was going to happen. And they were just going to stay silent, you know, because what do you respond? I mean, you know, how do you think they are still silent? Well, they're not. Well, as an L silent, but Shane issued an apology. Ah, brother. Let's look at his apology. Shane came out right away. Yep. Within about four hours of all this happening, Gillis comes out on Twitter and he says, I'm a comedian who pushes boundaries. I sometimes miss. If you go through my 10 years of comedy, most of it bad, you're going to find a lot of bad misses. I'm happy to apologize to anyone who's actually offended by anything I've said. My intention is never to hurt anybody, but I'm trying to be the best comedian I can be, and sometimes that requires risks. Okay. Yikes. So he tried to do a half C, half C. This apology. is a half half. You did apologize here. I'm happy to apologize to anyone that's actually offended. That's millions of people. They claim. Um, and uh, sometimes I miss. I don't know if that's a miss. You know, saying the thing about the is that a miss or you said. You know what I mean? I don't like, know if that's a miss. Just own up it's to not, what you said. Just own up. Go listen, man. You know, that's these fun. fucking nuts, bro. So, uh, yeah, that stuff's funny to me. Now, but yeah, what does SNL think? Is SNL just go, this is a miss? Is A.D. Bryant going to be able to work alongside with him? Who else is on that show? There's a lot of woke people on that show. You know, anti-Trump, very PC people on that show. I don't know if they're going to let this fly. Uh, I want to know what the listeners think. Do you think this is a puss out? Do you think, wow, he's selling his soul for SNL? Or do you think he's doing what he's got to do, Mike? Chill. He's cool. I think cool. He, well, he shouldn't have apologized because this apology isn't going to Look at make this. Anyone Here's happy. a guy defending him. I don't see an actual apology, apology here at all. He doesn't say sorry. He says, I'm happy to apologize. That's a, an apology. If you say, I, I apologize, you're apologizing. Yeah. Now he is kind of setting He's it up. That I he would doesn't apologize. think that anyone's actually offended and yeah. that they're being performatively right. woke is what he's getting at, but so, I still consider this a half scene. There's a lot of people apology. who don't want to see him go. I can see that there's a lot of people who go, I like Shane. I don't want to hate him. Right? A lot of people like that. So they're gonna go, This isn't an apology, yeah. Okay. Well, let's see what happens next. I wanna see. They're saying no apologies. An appropriate response from a comedian should be, suck my dick, bitch. Yes, I I agree. He's hustling. And why Brandon Miller, say- wait, listen to this. Brandon Miller says, ah, he's hustling. That's the scared, weak man's excuse, yes. Um, I don't like that. I don't like the hustling. You know, I think you got to live your life one way or another. I, I don't like people who want to eat from both forks, man. I don't. I think you either live in this world or you live in that world these days, you can't live in both. And saying that your 10 years of comedy has a lot of bad misses, isn't that dismissing all yes. your real fans? Yes, so there you go. So that's where I have a problem like with People it. like you because of your comedy. The they don't misses. think it's a miss. By the way, he's calling everything that we like about him, he's calling a miss. Now. Exactly. So that's kind of a problem here. Uh, I have a lot of bad misses. Why is that a miss? That's what was funny about that clip. The reason we watched it was for what you're now calling a miss. So, uh, yeah, to dismiss it, now what, are you a nice guy? Are you not going to do any misses? I want you to do misses still. We love misses around here. So if he's done with misses, are you going to be upset if now he never does any edgy stuff anymore and he's a goody two-shoes? Well, then you will, will you be upset? I don't know. Defending yourself is crunch, yes. 
I agree with that. And especially Never defend since yourself. SNL didn't say anything yet, do you think behind the scenes they demanded? Oh, he I mean, there's got to be something this is going what on. He, I don't know, came up with to kind of keep both people on his. Xander side. here in our chat it says he should have kept quiet. I, that's I. I think so too. Always keep quiet. Don't give them anything. You know, because this could all blow over within a day. You don't know. And Something else could happen. Coming out by Never. Monday, it could be gone. I would. You know, if I were this guy and they were. I would go, uh, yeah, I would probably not say anything. Why defend yourself? Never defend yourself. Even against, I would say only defend yourself if your true fans are asking Exactly. You. I was just going to say all of the people in the comments that are his fans are already hmm. defending him. Whoa. And all the people who like him aren't turning on exactly. him. Exactly. So you don't need so to apologize. So my philosophy is don't put yourself on trial. Only put yourself on trial if it's court ordered. Why put yourself through a trial? Fuck you. You don't need to explain yourself to anybody except for your fans if you actually like them. So I never explained myself to nobody unless if all of a sudden all of you wanted an explanation, then I think I owe it to you. Exactly. But I don't owe shit to anybody that don't like me. What's the point? Yeah, you don't get it. So never defend. Let's uh, see what the replies are saying, how people took his oh, apology. Oh, okay, yeah. Shane I'm Gillis curious, is coming. I'm because I didn't really read them. Let's see. Is there some meme? Okay, but he called Chinese people chinks. There's comedy, and then there's just plain racism. Whoa! Uh, circumstances and context are important. It was edgy talking between friends on a podcast. Not the greatest jokes, but there wasn't hate behind it. What do you mean, not the greatest jokes? One of the best jokes I've heard all year. <laughs> Why do people try to pretend... That, uh, oh, that's a low, oh, that's a low. Because they don't want to be called racist. These Twitter people are Who gives a shit about being called racist? A podcast among friends that uh, were also comedians. Comedians say edgy shit all the time. Friends also say edgy shit. That's just how it goes. This is that deep. I agree with that. It's not risky to be racist. It's boring. The material wasn't even funny. Apologize for that yikes but this is what i mean it's like if you know that you do all this stuff why would you take snl you know like you should at least have a plan for have this a plan other than just deleting all your old material and yes and there you go he deleted out. all his old material so he wants this new life kind of yeah he wants to get rid of the old life and on with the new this is kind of troublesome to me i don't know if i did that you'd be mad but uh you know, you got to really live by who cares. You see all these people all the time posting Iron Man quotes, Robert Downey Jr. I don't give a fuck. You do give a fuck, okay? Not giving a fuck really means you just go, and you don't even talk about it. Not giving a fuck is gone. Huh, I don't give a fuck. And you don't write an apology. You don't delete your old material. And if the SNL thing works out, you go, look, I got uh, the best of both worlds. I got my cake in 82. And if it doesn't, you go, yeah, what was I thinking? What Why I would it work out? What What is I expecting? I uh, said <laughs> all the time. You know, of course it's not. I am not. shouldn't be on NBC. You know, haven't you seen how the world works? You got to be uh, reasonable with yourself here a little bit here. So let's see this. Um, regardless of this, I have something. Uh, I always have my own take, don't I? <laughs> I always have my own take. You know, every other show kind of just riffs on what the whole world is talking about, right? And it's never even a riff. It's just the same shit repackaged by a different guy. Not here at Red Bar. There is nobody including this in the Shane Gillis story. And uh, this is where the pettiness comes in. Red Bar is known for its petty. I saw something about this guy I didn't like. I saw something about him I didn't like. Hmm. And remember, I don't know anything about him, but I saw this and I didn't like it. This comes from Kill Tony. You know Kill Tony, the show hosted by everybody's favorite uh, Australian visa card scam artist. He's got a fake wife from Australia, right? The nudist model, the goth. And uh, Tony Hinchcliffe runs a show called Kill Tony. It's a live show from the comedy store where he and three, two, three comedian guests, Brian Redban is on there. They uh, sit there and they let open micers come up and the open micers come up. They do one minute of stand up comedy and then they're judged it's like American Idol for stand up. OK, think about that. 
So Shane was a guest judge on that show, uh, along with Louis J. Gomez and uh, was it Big J. Okerson? Yes, from the Legion of Skanks. And Shane was on there. I didn't know Shane. I was watching this. And uh, this comic comes up and does a uh, his routine. I'm going to show you this here. Today, Brendan Gomez. Crick. Oh, shut the Getting fuck up. Getting it started. Brent. Shut the fuck up. Uh, Brendan Crick. Yeah, sorry. Always blasted out by stuff here. We're going to jump to, uh, let me first go to nine minutes in, I believe. Nine minutes in. I'm the time code queen. Nine minutes in. And uh, I'll show you. Here we go. Look at the beautiful setup here. Don't adjust your eyes. This is really how they do it. There's the band, okay, dressed up like the Clintons today. You've got Louis J. Gomez. Ah, oh, my good friend, Louis J. Gomez. Big J. Okerson. Uh, who does some really freaky deaky stuff behind the scenes. Some... <laughs> the king of chocolates, they call him. And there he is, Shane Gillis. There's my man. Whoa! Right there. And there's Tony Hinchcliffe. There's Brian Redband. Okay? They're all sitting there. Shane Gillis right in the middle. Uh, so this comic, they what they do is they uh, open micers, loser comics, comics that have only been doing comedy like a year or less throw their name into a bucket and tony picks out of a bucket and reads their name they come up they do 60 seconds of stand-up and then they judge them watch this all right your first comedian getting uh, uninterrupted 60 seconds tonight goes by the name of brendan crick brendan, brendan crick. crick wow Love that yeah. name. Deep that corner. fucking crick brendan crick here he comes porn section wow Damn. Here he is. Look at this guy. One more time for Thank Brendan you. Crick, everybody. Okay, so Brendan Crick comes up. He's this fucking midge, right? He must be like 4'11". He's a complete nerd. He's wearing like this Proud Boys-esque Fred Perry polo shirt, but with green stripes instead of yellow. He's wearing some slacks. Looks like some knockoff... Uh, uh, stomping boots, what do you call those uh, type of boots there? He's got glasses, he's got a nerd's haircut. I mean, he is a geek, man. He looks like he works at Comp USA or Circuit City, you know, and he's trying to sell you a compact Presario or HP Pavilion or a Gateway computer. I don't know if they sold, I think that was a, I don't know if they sold Gateways there. So uh, he's a geek, right? He comes up. And uh, let's listen to a little bit of his stand-up. Here's this geek coming up on stage. Where am I going with this? You'll see. Doc Martens, thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You ever think about how 9-11 was so long ago it's not even in HD? It's actually pretty fun. Like, you watch 9-11 now, you're like, what is this, a VHS tape? It's got, like, the lines going up. (laughs) It's funny, actually. I'm waiting for, like, the Blue Master to drop. The (laughs) Blu-ray remaster. Like, 9-11 was a weird amount of time ago, right? Like, it was a long time ago, but also everyone almost had smartphones. Like, we so narrowly missed a Snapchat 9-11. You know, just like a guy on the planes posting to his story, oh my God, they have box cutters, they took the cabin. To my darling wife and my children, I'm going to miss you so much, but he has dog ears. Very funny. <laughs> Just a guy with the boomerang making the towers go like, whoop, whoop. This is kind of killing my point whoop. here if he's funny. Let's pretend we hate all that comedy. And maybe you do, okay? Uh, he's still a nerd. Now watch this. So his comedy ends. Watch this. <laughs> his 60 seconds is about to come to a stop. Watch this. <laughs> Just fall. In- oh, thank you. <laughs> Hell yeah. Brendan Crick. Fun Look how short he is. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay, if you didn't, if you like his comedy, let's pretend we just hate him because he's short and a nerd. Okay, so here he is, shorter than the actual mic stand itself. That's always a bad sign. <laughs> you know, there's not a mic stand in this world that raises taller than me. Okay, tall man podcast. Gonna watch this. People don't know my true height here. Very fucking tall. I look like a uh, roll doll book or something right now. Right. This is like something you'd only see in a Shell Silverstein compilation. Tall man. And you can check this out on my Instagram, at Red Bar Radio, tall man podcast spin. I'm lumbering, man. I got to keep my chair. Look, my chair is six inches off the ground in order for me to come into frame regular. Okay? I'm very, very fucking tall. 
But this guy, very, very short. And uh, we do not take kindly to shouties around here. So let's see this. Here's the part that I thought was interesting about Shane Gillis. They're sitting here and they're all interviewing this guy. Let's watch a little bit of the interview. Here we go. Yes, the BFG. Thank you. Back. Here we go. Thank you. You've been on this show before, right? Yeah, twice before. I think I remember telling you that you seem like the kind of guy that sleeps with your glasses on. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Maybe Could have been. Yeah. Yeah. Look at you. You are adorable. How long have you been on stand-up? Like eight years? Eight years. Heck mm-hmm. yeah. You looked at... Uh, you yeah, looked we, at he and I started together in uh, Central oh. PA. Yeah. Woo. Wow. Heck yeah. Yeah, he's from Lancaster. Okay. okay. Damn, this he, must be awkward as shit then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's You're like weird. judging him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look he probably it. hooked you up with a show once. Uh-huh. Okay. Ooh, this is weird. <laughs> I wanted this to... So that's not true. They got their start together. Well, that's not uncommon. A lot of comedians get their start together. Right. A lot of comedians come up at the same time. Uh, we've seen this before. You know, there's people like who came up at the same time as Sarah Silverman and they're still, you know, feature comics openers. OK, not very big. So, OK, he uh, admits to that. I didn't even know that, but uh, that's nice. So they're going to sit here and make fun of him now. Watch this. Go well. <laughs> it did go well. The yeah, no, I feel good about. That's it. always been. He had. You remember that bit you had about uh, the troop? Like he had one bit in Central PA. It's very like hick, white <laughs> trash. And he was like, I liked nine eleven because it resulted in the death of so many troops. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the crowd, he, just, he bombed constantly. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. So <laughs> that- Shane starts making fun of him now because he he kind of gets this vibe that this guy's a nerd. Let's pick on him, right? So Shane's going, he used to bomb constantly, ha, ha, ha. And I think the rest of the guys, they're all kind of in the spirit, like, can't wait to start digging in. Let's start picking on this little shrimp. That's a PA, that. but yes. Let's see. <laughs> I love that. How long have you lived in L.A.? Uh, like two years, a little bit, a year and a half. Remind us, uh, how do you make money? I work at a bank during the day. Oh. Yeah, that seems okay. about right. Yeah. Oh, okay. He works at a bank during the day, so he's not even a paid comic. Not even a paid comic. Yikes. How sad. Uh, Shane Gillis on his way to SNL here. This is, you know, weeks before his SNL thing. This guy's working at a fucking bank, right? Uh, sir, uh, sorry, you've overdrawn your account. Uh, who the hell works at a bank, by the way? Uh, so, and even Tony goes, sounds about right. You know, because what? They all think he's a loser. Okay, let's see. It looks like you, it looks like you fogged up your glasses to clean them off, but you forgot to Lewis. clean them off. <laughs> They're all making fun of him. I just don't care about myself. Just, Is that true? Yo, oh, yeah, I neglect myself. And what, what are, what are oh, some wow. other ways that you neglect yourself? Can you share more with so us? So this is a true geek, right? I mean, you've heard enough. He works at a bank. He's a miniature man. He neglects himself. He's got that, hey, everybody, I got a voice like that. But he did have some funny 9-11 jokes. I will give him that, okay? Nina is what I call it. N-I-N-A. Uh, so, um... But uh, it's pretty clear this guy's a geekist, right? You wouldn't be caught dead hanging out with him. You don't want to be anywhere near him, okay? I'm going to uh, speak for you guys and say that that's <laughs> what you would think. Okay, let's hear the rest. Where is Mike going with this? What does this really have to do with Shane Gillis? Let's see. Uh, Someone says, well, uh, look at this guy. He's all, I knew he was responding to that. I go, he works at a bank. And then this guy goes, that's fine. And then he comes back in. He goes, what's wrong with working in a bank? What's wrong with working in a bank? Really? I have to go over this with you? Um, okay. Well, let me think. Uh, working in a bank. Uh, well, it fucking sucks. It's a fucking bank. What? What do you mean? Eight hours in a bank? That's crazy. So that's what I think is wrong with working at a bank. All right, look at this. Check this out. Um, Biceps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. I just I, I eat candy and drink soda all the time. He eats candy. Wow. Um, really? I tell people I work out, but I don't. <laughs> you know. You ever lot? been? You ever been fucked by an Italian criminal? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Been fucked by criminals, but women. I okay. Think. Oh. Yeah. Have you met my wife? Okay. Just, <laughs> stop it. Hello. Right. Hillary Clinton impression. It's very funny, man, but th- certainly. They're saying this guy works in an ATM. He's so small, he works at the ATM. He actually <laughs> manually, you know, he types, he sees the request, he hands you the money. 
That's how ATMs work. It's not robotics. Nervous as shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, very see? hot up here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Anything crazy ever happen to you when you're working at the bank? Anybody ever hand you a note? And you're like, hey, oh, I'm here we go. To- well, thank you guys for sticking up for me. My mom worked at a bank. Someone says, five years. She said it was the worst job she ever had. Wow, look at that. Wow. Why would it be good? I mean, come on, man. It's a job. Eight hours at any fucking place. Standing there. Hello, can I help you? Hello? Hello, can I look at your records? Hello, can I? What the fuck? Who would want to work at a bank? And you don't work at a bank, bro. That guy says he worked at a... What bank allows Red Bar to be blared through the speakers at 1223 on Friday? (laughs) What bank do you work at? You know? I don't believe that guy anymore. You know, uh, by the way, if you work at a bank and you listen to Red Bar, you should be looked into by the FBI. All right. Because this is a bank thieves haven. And I'm reporting you to your uh, job. Here we go. This on stage tonight or something like that. I had a I had a guy reach over the counter and caress my whole arm. Wow. Yeah. I mean, if he's caressing your arm. I'm sorry to keep interrupting. Here's a guy, very funny, he goes, I am actually a bank robber, this guy said. So him, now we have a bank robber in our chat fighting with the guy who worked at the bank, I hope. natural enemies. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, this show was, people don't know this. I got my start, I was a bank robber. Wow. When I first started this. (laughs) Everybody get down, I used to say. They drop to the floor. But then you realize the yelling could take you to other places. Exactly. They go, you've got a perfect scream for red bar radioing. And I said, (laughs) oh, okay, I'll do that instead. Less trouble. All right, let's see what happens here. Why am I showing you this clip? Let's see. Imagine all the other arms that guy must be caressing throughout the day. It was Lewis looking for your biceps. <laughs> so they're all making fun of this wow. chode, right? So uh, what's your love life like? You admit to not taking care of yourself. You say mm-hmm. you drink soda and eat candy. Oh, I'm very celibate. I, uh... Uh-oh. You yeah. know, I'll, I'll fuck like uh, yeah, one... Yeah, me, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Billy boy. <laughs> Uh, how celibate are you? How celibate uh, are you? I fucked like six months ago, and you know, no, no more of that for me. So <laughs> no more no, we'll of that be. for you. So this guy's been on stage for like uh, six minutes here, all in all. And Shane's kind of sitting there. He said we came up in comedy together. Uh oh, do we have another secret? Is there another secret that maybe Shane didn't want out because Shane said, "Yeah, we work together in comedy." Now Shane's kind of sitting there, kind of hey, yay, yay, right? We're going. What's going on? Watch this. I'm going to back up just a second, and I want you to just see. This is all you. I'm not going to make any judgments here. Watch this. Like six months ago, and, you know, no, no more of that for me. So <laughs> No more no, of we'll that be. for you. <laughs> we'll be fine going forward without that. Did you hurt her? What happened? <laughs> no more of no, that. No, just, you know, like, I, I, I fuck badly eventually. It's just like, I oh, fuck too badly. Much That's bad. Eventually they turn 18. <laughs> What kind of explaining? How badly do you fuck? Give us a. Give, well, I, give us, give I us fuck fine, deets. but I never come. <gasps> what do you mean? <laughs> okay, there's a sick one. I fuck fine, but I never come. Okay, shooting it out. It's kind of a uh, weird thing. Let's hear some more. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean you never come? Well, you know, just. Are you putting your finger on the tip of it? Or like. like... <laughs> What, you man, got, what are you talking about, <laughs> Red Band? Dude, Jeffrey Epstein had less reason to kill himself. Yeah. Shane, you've heard me so, fuck. How I, did it sound? I've heard you fuck. Oh, yeah. We also lived together in Philly. Oh, uh, what? Wait, 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 wait. I will back this up. <laughs> so this comic is sitting there taking it up the ass, and then he goes, Shane, you've heard me fuck. And Shane goes, uh, uh, oh yeah, we also lived together for a time. What? (laughs) I think that should have been disclosed at the beginning, Shane. This is kind of a thing for me. All right, now I understand this is petty. But Shane did not want that crowd knowing he lived with this fucking guy. Wow, oh, look at the chat. Wow, we got one. Shane is a bad guy. Oh, yeah, we were roommates. Wowzers, I love this. 
Wow, LOL. The chat is lit up, man. Plus, he let a giant pause go by before he said, yeah. oh, yeah. We oh, so it. you kind of forgot that you once lived with this fucking nerd who can't come? <laughs> Dog. Listen, I'd be embarrassed about living with this kid, too, but, you know... So the minute he came up, she was like, fuck, this makes me look uncool. Fuck, this makes me look uncool. By the way, should you ever be even living with a guy, I am a no roommate man. I want you to know this. Never had a fucking guy roommate. Well, in college, I did. I was, you know, 18. After that, no roommates. All right? Girls, girls, those types of girls. Black, white, Puerto Rican, Chinese girls. Just kidding, just whites. But <laughs> uh, roommates, bad. Let's watch this again. Dude, Jeffrey Epstein had less reason to kill himself. <laughs> yeah. Shane, you've heard me so, fuck. How I, did it sound? I've heard you fuck. Oh, yeah. We also oh, lived yeah. together in Philly. <gasps> and, uh, Wait, what? Shane, you should have started off with that. <laughs> I yeah. forgot. I, to <laughs> I, I totally forgot. We that's how forgettable you <laughs> are. Oh, no. I forgot. I totally forgot. I don't know about Jules. You ever forget who you've lived with in Philly? Before so. no, not me. Yikes! Little embarrassing. Let's read the comments. Yep, can't support this Shane guy. That's very <laughs> suspect. These men have touched. Uh, being on Kill Tony makes you look bad to begin with. Okay, sure. Uh, no roommates after college. This is run as easy level shit. Um, ha ha. Roommate after college means gay. Lies begin. Forgot. Wow. Yikes. Um, let's see what happens here. Let's watch this uh, unravel again. Here. Just started off with that. <laughs> I forgot. I, to <laughs> I totally forgot. We That's how forgettable <laughs> you are that he forgot you lived with him. Well, he was like living because he's like real autistic. So he's like living with like a weird cat. So like he would, uh, he would come uh, home and like run straight up the steps. He'd be like, whoa, whoa and uh, just run away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he <laughs> forgot that he lived with him. Uh-oh. <laughs> Have you ever come having sex with someone? Oh, yeah. I used to come. But no more. What oh, happened? Oh, and then Shane takes the ever needed fool sip. Sorry, folks. He goes like this. Oh, glad that's over. The endless look into the cup. Am I going to be okay looking at the reflection in the beer? Oh, get it together, Shane. That sip that people make when they just can't look the camera in the eye. So, I don't know. Listen, I want to like Shane. But what have we seen here today? We saw a guy that started out cool. Now he wants to be on SNL. He's making apologies. He's deleting content. He's forgetting that he lived with creeps. Yikes, man. Mike don't know about that. So there it is. The uh, Shane Gillis saga. Let's see what he does. Though. Let's see what happens with this SNL thing. Can't wait to see if he gets fired or I'm not. I'm excited. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back because I... Ga, go, bathroom, bad. You know how this works. We'll see you in a sec.